This is Joe with the LSA and I'd like to welcome all of you to our webinar series. Today's webinar is titled, How Indoor Location and Local Product Data Drive Sales and Engagement, and will be brought to you by our guest presenter, Nathan, from aisle 411. So with that, let's get started. Over to you, Nathan. Great. Thanks a lot, Joe. Happy to be here, and thanks for everyone joining today. Um, so as we kick this off, uh, there is uh, contact information here uh, that you'll see on this screen. If, if anyone wants to reach out to me uh, following this, this with additional questions, feel free to. Uh, my email address is right here at the bottom of the screen and my Twitter handle as well. So as we get started, um, a statistic that might surprise you is an estimated $608 billion was lost in retail walkout sales in 2014. That means that shoppers came in ready to shop, ready to buy, uh, but left the store without buying something they intended. And that could be because they couldn't find the product, they couldn't get assistance from associates in the store, or the product was out of stock. And that really, as we look globally, is a huge opportunity to optimize all of the product data that's located at physical stores and also utilize indoor location technologies to solve this solution. The reality is that the technology is there. Um, we just need, as a market, to move aggressively forward in implementing it to solve these problems. So today, I'm, I'll be talking about how indoor location and local product data is enabling retail and mobile. And our agenda includes talking through the key market drivers uh, for local product discovery and indoor location, how retailers and developers can implement now, and we'll walk through some of the various technologies, some use cases with retailers that are doing this already in the market. We'll talk through some of the key performance indicators that retailers are looking at, and then also some suggestions on choosing a vendor. And then we'll finish up with um, with a couple of really exciting emerging solutions that we think over the next couple of years are going to really dramatically change the consumer experience and how they interact with all this data. So to give you a, a one minute snapshot of aisle 411 uh, so you know the perspective that we're coming from. Um, essentially our, our view uh, and mission is to build what we call the internet of stores and that essentially means taking the same type of digital sophistication that we've become accustomed to on e-commerce websites and making that available at physical retail stores. So we do that through local search, indoor mapping, local and indoor positioning. That all generates interesting shopper analytics. And the majority of this is, is provided through shopper apps and associate apps. As you can see, uh, there's a list of some of our key accounts uh, that we work with in the retail ecosystem. So as we look at this market um, and, and what's driving this, uh, this interesting statistic from Google uh, notably came out in 2013. So this is a couple of years ago even. And when they looked at in-store smartphone use across all different product categories, essentially the result is that shoppers are using mobile in-store across all product categories. So anyone who sells a product virtually needs to be playing in this game because shoppers are out there and they're looking for information. As we dive in a little deeper into what consumers are doing when they're in store when they can't find a particular item, um, as you'll see here, about half of the, the people out there simply ask an associate. Um, that's the only way that we've really been programmed to do for decades now. 30% uh, will just keep looking for it because they don't want to talk to an associate. But what's interesting um, is over here on the top right, these numbers actually add up to a pretty dramatic number. Um, shoppers will either go to another store to look for the item or choose to purchase, choose not to purchase it at all. Um, and when you look at those numbers, it's a huge opportunity to connect digitally with these shoppers who want information in the store who are enabled by their mobile devices, as long as the product data and the location technologies are there to support it. So ultimately, why this is important, um, the data is showing that an engaged shopper, uh, both locally and in the store, will drive more visits to the store and will drive more basket, bigger baskets. 
And I'll show you a couple of uh, case studies um, later on in the presentation of, of where we're seeing this actually happen. So as we dive into some of the key drivers here in the marketplace, we look at the tech evolution. And essentially, um, we're all familiar with this, but it's, it's worth pointing out that since 2007, we've been programmed to be turning to more and more mobile devices um, to get assistance. And even in, in 2014, we're seeing in 2015, um, a new age of wearables, a new age of augmented reality technology. And none of this um, can go forward without data being optimized properly. And then we also see, have seen um, in 2014, we saw mobile overtake desktop in terms of how shoppers are turning to digital media. And what's notable there is also the mobile application. And 52% uh, of the media time spent in mobile app. So while I know that there have been some recent studies saying that uh, shoppers are, are spending as much or more time online, I think what we see is, is most people demand great experiences in mobile application. And if the data and experience is there, they will turn to a mobile app that is native versus the web. So if we look at, if we pull out one of those uh, retail verticals, even in just grocery shopping, uh, this is interesting uh, statistic that Ninth Decimal put out. It talks about how shoppers are using uh, mobile to discover, to plan, and in the shopping process. And I think, um, you know, as shoppers are looking for that information, it's absolutely critical for everyone to, you know, whether it's a retailer, a brand, to have the data ready to go, um, optimized so consumers can interact with it easily because it's leading through the entire process of the path to purchase. This is an interesting uh, um, quote that was pulled out that really sums up our you know, younger generation that says, I'd rather give up like a kidney than my phone. And I think it's, again, just hitting home how everyone is turning to mobile uh, to interact with, with everything in their life. And the reason for this is trust, speed, and timing. If we look at you know, the trust factor, um, Deloitte asked shoppers with a smartphone if they preferred using their mobile device in a store for assistance versus an associate. And overwhelmingly, 73% said, I would rather turn to my mobile device. Five years ago, um, I think all of us would have been shocked to see this number, but, but it's, it's definitely there. Um, we also look at, you know, will shoppers share their location? And uh, this information came from Swirl, um, which is a, a beacon and analytics provider. And their study found that 77% are willing to share their, their position, whether it's local or indoor, as long as you provide enough value. And then also, you know, if, if we look at uh, consumers abandoning their shopping cart, 80% say that they will abandon it if, if uh, they have to more than five minutes for, for help in the store, whether that's finding a product, getting a question answered, or, ch or at checkout. And then Forrester Research um, has this concept of the mobile moment. And uh, I know this number really shocked me when I first saw it, but roughly 200 times a day, uh, the average person is checking their mobile device. And they're doing it for everything. And so if, uh, if the data is not optimized and ready at that exact mobile moment, then it's a missed opportunity uh, for brands, retailers, um, media agencies, et cetera. And while we look at um, you know, the retail ecosystem, 90% of purchases are taking place inside the physical store. Um, even with all of e-commerce uh, growing, uh, we're still seeing shoppers doing a lot of the planning online and on mobile and then going in the store to complete the transaction. And then finishing up with a couple of more uh, interesting statistics on the market here, 84% um, of smartphone shoppers are using their device to help them shop while in the store. Um, and, and this also makes sense uh, drawing people in uh, locally because Google shows us that uh, three in four who find local information in search results helpful are more likely to visit. And then Opus Research estimates that roughly $10 billion in consumer spending will be touched or directly affected by the indoor, indoor location by 2018. So to kind of get into to some of the, the more fun stuff here, um, I wanted to give you an example of just how 
one way that, that, uh, that we are actually implementing this local and in-store product search functionality um, is through an application called Shops. And we have about 200,000 retail locations that allow a shopper to go in, search for an item, find the nearby stores that offer those products, and then any of those that have indoor mapping and in product location, you can simply tap that indoor map and be directed directly to the section of the aisle in that specific store where the product is located. And the reason this is so interesting um, for, for everyone involved in the media e ecosystem is that now we can understand following the shopper intent from home to all the way in the store. And when you combine this with indoor location technology, we can now give attribution to say we actually delivered that shopper to the shelf. Um, did they buy? Um, all of a sudden, we're able to understand was the price right, was the offer right, but we know that we took that shopper exactly to the product in their hand. And I'll talk a little bit more uh, in a minute about how this can be integrated with other um, solution providers as well. One example is um, IO411 powers uh, some of the red laser product locator solution. Uh, we're just in the last um, uh, several months, we had close to two, two and a half million inbound consumer requests for where to buy products. Um, and that is important because any retailer that essentially is not optimizing their data and, and feeding it through this product location platform, um, in many cases, just gets left out and shoppers don't realize that they even carry these products inside of the store. Um, another area where this gets interesting is you know, taking uh, some of these local product uh, data sets and providing those APIs through other digital advertising um, efforts. So this is just an example. Uh, this this uh, image here was not something that was implemented uh, in the marketplace, but it's just an example as a visual to how this could be implemented. Is you know any kind of digital advertisement that you might see if someone is inspired to say, okay, now where do I go buy that product? Um, by including this shops where to buy API inside of other digital advertising, uh, a shopper could easily find where to locate and then help convert that into a sale. We're also seeing this happen with uh, not only nearby and local, uh, but also in other applications. So one example of someone who's doing this is Toys R Us and actually uh, allowing shoppers to go in, um, map out all of the deals and offers that they're interested in and find the exact aisle location of where to find those. I'll go into a little bit more depth uh, in a few minutes of you know, some of the case studies and the results of these findings, but these are just some examples of how this is being implemented. So if we, if we take that local product data um, and, and we assume that that is getting optimized for discovery and for search, it really starts to get interesting when indoor location technology comes in and is integrated with this. But one of the myths uh, that, that we see a lot of times is that indoor location is this one point solution of technology that positions a user. Um, maybe it's a, a beacon, which is more generally used for proximity, or maybe it's some type of, of Wi-Fi triangulation of where the user is. But without um, optimizing all of the data and the contextual information, um, it leaves a lot to be uh, imagined in terms of why and where a shopper actually was and how an advertisement may have delivered that shopper there. So when we look at the, uh, the key elements, um, we really look at, at, there's two components here. It's the data optimization, um, and, and we look at you know, the store floor map being optimized, uh, converted into a digital searchable um, solution. All of the product information and location data is, is optimized. Uh, the store inventory, and then one thing that's many times overlooked is you know, looking at sales data and looking at marketing data to understand what type of uh, marketing initiatives might be driving shoppers in store to shelves and ultimately has that result in sales. Then layering on top of that the location technology which includes both positioning and proximity uh, which, which we view as two very different things. That is where we're able to generate actionable solutions in terms of product search discovery, in-store maps, the navigation, uh, notification management, and how that interacted with the shopper, and ultimately the analytics and insights. So 
this is some information that, uh, that Apple released uh, publicly and it really was a, it did a pretty good job of explaining the difference between positioning and proximity. So um, what, what Apple's made public, for example, is uh, their core indoor location API, which works with cell, GPS, Wi-Fi, and motion, and gets uh, two to three meters roughly um, of accuracy in terms of where a device is located in an indoor location. It also gives you the floor uh, on which that device is located. And those can be used for things like wayfinding um, analytics. This is very different from uh, the iBeacon protocol that they have um, in which there's about two to three meters of proximity. Uh, it's beacon dependent. Uh, the beauty is it can trigger notifications and analytics. But generally speaking, um, the beacons aren't being used for actual navigation and shopper path through the store. So as we look at these technologies and, and how we're seeing um, retailers and brands even look at this, um, what, what we have seen uh, come back is that they're looking at, can I increase my traffic, increase conversion rates, uh, basket size, and then customer satisfaction and loyalty, and then ultimately tracking that on um, the impact of in-store sales, which, which there's a very uh, strong need to tie point of sale data or loyalty data to ultimately close the loop on all of these types of solutions. So this is just a, um, a quick bullet point of where we're seeing indoor location being used, general wayfinding, um, allowing shoppers to map products, to map lists, offers. Um, we're seeing even associates using this um, with the um, the growth now of online order in-store pickup or even uh, home delivery, uh, the time it takes to go and pick these products off the shelf is real uh, money in terms of operations for these retailers. And all these solutions can be used to help uh, shoppers not only restock the shelf but do order picking as well. And ultimately, this is, is just proof that um, all of this data in the store needs to be optimized to even facilitate the, the online ordering that's taking place as well. So we look at some of the, uh, the indoor location landscape. Um, if we look at uh, indoor maps for retail, um, Kyle 411 ourselves along with Point Inside are, are two of the, the leaders in the space. And, and then it gets really interesting where you have chipset companies that are actually providing chipsets in the devices. Um, you've got the operating systems that are playing in this space. You have cloud positioning systems, which include magnetics, um, LED light positioning, um, LED software, and several Wi-Fi solution providers. And then, of course, there's many different beacon providers that are included in this as well. Um, one of the points that I did want to make here on this slide is, uh, and we'll get into a little more detail, is on the, on the bottom of the list of beacon providers, uh, we see that in, in the coming months and, and years that many of the lighting manufacturers will be including uh, BLE beacons embedded in the actual light fixtures themselves, which is really interesting because it provides uh, an opportunity to have consistent um, electricity to these beacons um, and be able to control them from a security level as well, which is interesting. <clears throat> So then you take all that technology and, you know, how are, how are people using it? Um, one of the things that, that's interesting as we look at product and location coming together is uh, we see a lot of shoppers are actually going in, building generic-based shopping lists, and then when they get to the store saying, here's my list, now show me the path through the store that I should take. There's a couple of interesting things that um, don't initially meet the eye here. So one of those is that 80% of digital shopping lists uh, that, that we are seeing along with our retail partners, they are built using generic one and two name items, uh, item names. So very rarely are we seeing uh, shoppers putting UPC specific items on the shopping list. So what that means is all of this product data has to be normalized and the search taxonomy and the normalized search terms have to be tagged to every UPC. So that when a shopper puts shaving cream on their shopping list. Um, we don't know the UPC they're looking for. They might, but we're still able to guide them to that location. Where that gets 
even more interesting is this creates a perfect opportunity to then recommend a brand or a, an offer specific to those types of items. And, and we're seeing that uh, be very successful because the shoppers in that purchase mode and they are literally seconds away from making a purchase decision. So it's the perfect time to get one more chance to recommend that brand or offer to the shopper in store. Now, uh, let's take those, that list for example, and you're, and you're, you're able to, um, to, to show people where things are, but how do we know where that shopper is and when do they get to the, that offer? If we recommended a brand of, of shaving cream, when did they go and how long did they dwell in front of that, that uh, shelf? Well, um, this is um, just a small sample of the many location technologies that are coming together and the ones that we've had experience integrating with. Uh, computer vision is interesting and it's really hitting the market in 2016, but it's using cameras and depth sensors on new devices that are expected to hit the market. They kind of see like our eyes see and they're able to um, position a user within 10 centimeters of accuracy. Um, magnetics and the magnetometers that are in devices can be used as well um, in the cloud. Um, Indoor Atlas is a company that's really uh, forging ahead uh, in this space. Inertial sensors, uh, so motion, pedometer, gyroscope, all this uh, that, that are in the devices. There's many companies that are working on these solutions. Wi-Fi, there's Wi-Fi plus sensors. Um, and then you'll see highlighted uh, below is uh, beacon and LED. And the reason those two are highlighted together is um, this convergence of these two technologies which provide the ability to, to push message, interact with shoppers when the device is in their pocket, but also have very, very precise uh, uh, indoor positioning when the device is out of pocket and a shopper is looking at information on their phone and interacting with it. So just to, to get a little bit more clarity on that. Um, three of the companies that we've seen are really um, leading the way in this. This technology are, are GE, Philips, and Acuity Brands, uh, three of the biggest uh, lighting manufacturers. And this, this new LED lights uh, interact with a camera on a mobile phone and are able to sense the, the unique flicker in the light that the human eye can't see and position that device with uh, five centimeter accuracy along with orientation. So this gets really interesting um, as brands would be able to understand a shopper standing right directly in front of their packaging and know that they were facing it and not turned around facing the other aisle. Um, what's even more interesting though is, is adding the BLE beacon functionality to the lights with, with a power supply and being able to trigger engagement with a shopper as they would walk into the store for example, this could be done by saying, welcome to our store. Um, here are three offers that we think you might be interested in. And then being able to understand while well, the shopper's device is out of pocket, um, we can show them where to go get that product and offer that they may not have considered. And then track and give attribution to say this shopper actually went to that shelf um, within 60 seconds of me triggering an offer. And that has tremendous power on showing brands the effectiveness and efficiency of their digital ad spend. So ultimately, uh, those types of things come together when you bring the positioning, the digital store map, the product data, and you can drive impulse uh, center store visits um, that are extremely profitable and valuable to retailers and brands as well. So let's get into a few use cases of things that are actually uh, in the market today. Um, Walgreens um, is a great example and, and one that, that we happen to work with as well. They, they view that uh, a shopper who shops uh, multi-channel, who shops stores online and mobile is four to six times as valuable as someone who simply shops in one of those. And so when you look at what they've done um, in their mobile application is essentially they've used uh, outdoor geofencing with GPS to understand if you visit a, uh, a parking lot or if you're visiting one of their stores, it's essentially the, the radius of about their parking lots. And you'll get a, uh, a little tab that says welcome to Walgreens, uh, that certain location. And the experience is much different than when you are out of store. And what they show front and center is the ability for you to log in with your uh, rewards card. Um, that helps them understand previous purchase history as well. And then with the floor map, product locator, and scanner, um, it, it it provides immediate purchase intent in terms of what that shopper is looking for today. 
And then that translates into what you see on the bottom there, those digital coupons. Of, uh, those coupons become extremely efficient understanding previous purchase history, immediate intent. And, and we have seen that that is leading to an increase in conversion rates because of, of how relevant and timely those offers are. Uh, so with, with uh, uh, Walgreens, for example, they also allow shoppers to build shopping lists within their app. And within there, you can actually tap store map, and it creates a, a really unique shopping list within a, a, an indoor map. And we estimate that this leads to a 5 to 10% increase uh, in the profitability um, of the users who are using this. It also enhances the experience for the shopper um, and allows for uh, products to be recommended very relevantly. And you know, one of the, the things that's uh, many times overlooked here is you know, when you're providing these self-help solutions to, to shoppers, um, it frees up associates to do other things and be more efficient. Um, with the store operations. So Toys R Us is another great example. Um, last year in Forbes, uh, their president, Hank Mullaney, um, basically said, hey, we've learned from our customers. We know that they can be overwhelmed when they're trying to buy gifts. We can't have them walk into our massive stores and be overwhelmed. Um, they want to make, make it, they want to make it, they want to make it easy. And so uh, an example here is, you know, that they actually deployed a solution where Shoppers were able to come in, take a look at all of the, the deals and offers that Toys R Us was offering for the holidays, and then map those to the specific. Um, there was a correlation of over 30% um, increase in basket size for these tech savvy uh, deal mappers versus the average basket. Um, this was a combination of many things that came into play, which includes a digital savvy shopper, someone who's pre-planning, they're looking for multiple deals and offers, but also making it easy for them to find those products so they can convert, put them in the basket, and buy. Um, some of the other um, uh, data that we've been able to glean is that um, by providing these self-help solutions like letting shoppers find products locally, map them in the stores, they're over 28% more likely to say, yes, I'd, I'd be more willing to make an in-store visit knowing that my shopping trip is going to be easier here. And we've also um, been doing several tests where we deliver uh, relevant digital advertisements based upon what a shopper is searching for um, in store um, and compared that to just serving up a um, kind of run of site advertisement when the shopper is pre-planning. And we found that there is roughly a 2x increase in the conversion of being able to get that item in the basket if we recommend it to a shopper in the store at that last mile of the purchase decision. Uh, another good example is um, uh, Swirl, uh, which actually went, worked with Lord & Taylor um, to deploy roughly four to six beacons per store um, in 2014. And they looked at increasing uh, conversion and loyalty inside of the store. And, and what was interesting is they, they publicized that there was an 18% engagement rate uh, with, with shoppers who were receiving these relevant push notifications based upon where they were inside of Lord & Taylor. And to put that in perspective, uh, as you can see on the screen here, uh, the average mobile banner engagement rate is 0.4%. And so while there, there may have been some um, you know, early adopters as a part of this to kind of with, with intrigue, 18% uh, is nothing uh, to turn away compared to 0.4%. So this type of, of solution um, I know worked well for Lord & Taylor and I believe in 2015 they're rolling it out to uh, more full deployment. And then uh, Shopkick, of course, um, one of the leaders in the Beacon space uh, deployed um, in 4,000 locations. Um, this beacon solution. And what they found is that Shopkick users uh, spend an average of 50 to 100 percent more than others. Um, one notable thing though about the Bluetooth was that they also did find that 50 percent of the shoppers uh, simply didn't have Bluetooth on or capable on their device. So there's definitely limitations uh, when it comes to a beacon only solution but part of the message today is, is that you know, this is very comprehensive solution set. Um, people out there are doing it. 
and it needs to all come together with product data and um, comprehensive technologies inside of the store. So if we look at uh, how to get started, um, I think the, the first thing to do is really optimize local product data, uh, get it normalized for search and discovery, um, and that's really critical. And, and when we look at um, how shoppers are searching, um, it's, again, very generic um, in, in most cases. And so having all of this product data optimized is, is very important. And then, you know, whether it's retailers or developers to create APIs that make this available. Um, and, and many times retailers are hesitant to share this information, but um, it's, you know, I, I think in the new mobile age, it's, you know, looking at an API as kind of how uh, we looked at, at the web um, five to ten years ago. Um, we need to get the information out there and exposed to shoppers in as many places as possible to drive visits, uh, not to the website, but to the actual physical store. And then um, one of the easier implementations is adding this proximity technology. Um, uh, we're seeing that you know, most retailers out there today are at least testing beacon technologies. Um, and I think it's going to become more and more um, uh, necessity for, for every retailer. And then finally, um, adding this precise positioning technology, which has been very, very um, complex, but it's finally starting to come of age. And I think uh, those that are moving on it now are going to reap tremendous benefits. And then, of course, just implementing in local and in-store initiatives that, that can be tested. So in the end, um, you know, it really kind of comes down to this. Uh, taking product lo and location data, optimizing that data, adding location technology. Um, IL-411 is one provider that can do that. There are many others as well. And then making that uh, available to distribute across um, your applications um, and, and many other developer applications as well. So I did want to, uh, kind of in finishing up, uh, one of the emerging solutions, and um, there, there are some videos uh, on YouTube that actually highlight this as well, but one of uh, the most fascinating is um, some of the implementations that we've been doing with Google's Project Tango technology. And literally what happens is these new Android devices that are uh, expected to be hitting mainstream market in 2016, um, contain a couple of different camera, two cameras and a depth sensor on the device. And we can actually walk through an indoor space. Uh, the cameras pick up about two million data points every second and build uh, literally a visual 3D indoor map of what it sees. And by taking that technology and then overlaying this optimized product data, we can then um, take that information in the cloud and provide a user experience where a shopper can go in with the device and literally be you know, um, positioned within about 10 centimeters of accuracy. So as you see in this screenshot, um, this is a, a real world example of how walking down the aisle, um, we can have augmented reality shelf cards essentially that are recommending products that might be relevant to you as you walk down the aisle to gain new attention. And, and that can be done um, you know, with visual, it can also be done with sound. Um, it's it's extremely uh, interesting. But the point made here is that you know all of these new technologies coming of age um, can't really be implemented until all of the product data at these physical locations is optimized and ready and organized with location intelligence. And so I think the future is going to be really exciting. Uh, there's a lot of things that we can do today and implement now, and um, and it's only going to get better from there on out. So. Okay, so thanks again, Nathan, for conducting today's webinar, and thanks to everyone for attending today. If you have any questions or would like to be connected with today's speaker, simply email us at webinars at the LSA.org. Also, for a look at what is coming and to access all of our past webinars, visit www.dlsa.org slash webinars. So thanks again, everyone, and have a great day.